Hello and welcome to Reactions of Our Canes. Uh, this is going to be a long video, so please have a look at the relevant section I want to look at in the description. So the first thing that our canes usually go through um, that we can use is combustion. And that means we just burn it. Um, combustion just means burn. Uh, we can burn it with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide, water and energy. So we have this to make carbon dioxide plus water plus energy. We don't need to write energy because that's six letters or how many letters it is. So the reason why we um, burn it is because we use we can use it for energies. We have it in boilers because it produces water as well, which helps us uh, not use water from the pipes and whatnot. So we use it in cars as well, by the way. So as you can see here, this is an incomplete or imbalanced, unbalanced equation. We need to balance it because we've got six carbon atoms here and we've only got one there. So that means we need to have six carbon atoms. Don't worry about the oxygen just yet. Let's have a look at the hydrogen. We've got 14 molecules of hydrogen, 14 atoms of hydrogen over here. We've only got two here. So that means we need seven more, okay, because seven molecules of H2 make 14. So now we can look at the oxygen. We see that there are 12 molecules of oxygen here. I'm going to just use a different color. There are 12 atoms of um, oxygen here plus 7 over here, which makes 19 in total. But we've only got a diatomic molecule over here. That means we would need 19 divided by 2 molecules of O2. Because if you think about it, we've got 19 molecules of single, single molecules of oxygen, not diatomic. And because there's two oxygens in a, there's two oxygen atoms in a molecule, we need half of what it is on that side. So that's why I divided it by two. Luckily, we can just leave it like that. Or if you want to, you can write it as 8.5 molecules of oxygen of O2. So alcohols can also combust as well. It reacts um, when we burn it with oxygen to make CO2 and H2O. So we just do it as normal. We have five molecules of carbon there and we've got 12, not molecules, I keep saying molecules, five atoms of carbon there and 12 atoms of hydrogen there. That means we need to have it as six because um, six times two is 12. Over here, we've got five times two, which is 10 atoms of oxygen and six atoms of oxygen over here to make 16. So on this side we've got 16 single atoms of oxygen. Over here we've only got three. So we need to subtract one because there's an oxygen over here. There's an oxygen on this one over here. Not many people see that. So we need to subtract one oxygen from here to make 15 and then divide it by two. Okay because if you think about it if we did um, which is uh, 7.5. If we did 7.5 times 2, which makes 15, 15 and this oxygen over here will make 16. And therefore we have 16, molecule, 16 atoms of oxygen on this side and on that side. Incomplete combustion is very dangerous. That's why our boilers need to be serviced regularly. And that's what happens when we have a limit supply of oxygen. So say for example we have the Bunsen burner and we close the uh, we close the air supply hole we notice that we have an orange flame and that is due to the incombustion of the fuel of the gas that's coming in that's why when we open it it turns into a blue one it means it's very healthy it's getting all the oxygen it needs Bob's your uncle so We've got C16, C6H14 over here, and it is reacting with oxygen, but it, remember, it's a limit. So it produces carbon monoxide, I'm telling you this now, plus water. So it is good in a way, it still produces water, but carbon monoxide is very poisonous, so we wouldn't want it. So we've got six atoms of carbon, so we need to have six atoms of carbon over here. We've got 14 here, so that means we need seven over here. And we need to calculate how much is there. So 6 plus 7, which is 13 single atoms of oxygen. We need to divide it by 2. So we have 6.5 atoms 
6.5 molecules of O2. As you can see here, we have got more oxygen molecules than over here. Remember, it is the same product that I've just used. For some reason, I'm so crazy about, our, um, about hexane that I'm using it for the whole video. But we have, we've got more oxygen atoms here than here. So, it also goes through catalytic cracking, where we literally crack it like a fortune cookie, so we can use it for more stuff. Because, to be honest, we don't really need lots of bitumen or lots of alkanes that we use for the road. So we can crack it, which is really random, but we have a high temperature and high pressure, or we can use a low temperature with a catalyst involved, which speeds up the reaction. So, uh, in this case, C15H32 has made two molecules of ethene. Be careful, because the, um, the general formula here is CnH2n. Over here is propene, again, and alkene. They're both alkenes, by the way, because cracking always leads to alkenes. Always. Okay? And we use it for polymer production, when the bonds open up and attach to more alkenes to make polymers. But that's in a different video. And it also makes a shorter chain alkane, which is, in this case, octane. As you can see by the general formula, this is CnH2n plus 2. And we can use it for fuels as well, like airplane fuels and car fuels and so on and so forth. We go through two other processes which are used for fuels, basically, because they have a lower boiling point. Please see my other video on... Um, alkanes, we want to know about boiling points. So this process over here is called isomerization, and that's what happens when we actually branch the straight chains isomer. Okay, so we've branched it. It's, it has gone from one, two, three, four, five. It has gone from pentane to one, two, methyl, because it is a methyl group over here. One, two, three, four, butane. As you can see, this is a chained isomer because we have still got five carbon atoms and H2N plus two, 12 hydrogen atoms. Over here, this is um, the same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is hexane, so it's not the same thing. And we can reform it to make cyclohexane with a formula of CnH2N. Cycloalkanes have a different formula to alkanes itself, which means we have got two um, we've got two hydrogen atoms missing because they have been broken off to make a diatomic molecule, which is H2. So whenever you are reforming it, it would make H2. And that's very important that you know the difference between isomerization and reforming. The reason why we do this is because these, these over here that I've made are actually really efficient in burning because it has got a lower boiling point. It is less volatile. Well, actually, mm, more, more volatile, I mean. And so, therefore, it's much better at combustion. And that is it. Oops. That is not it. <laughs> For, um, next one <coughs> is halogenation. Yeah, totally forgot about halogenation. Halogenation basically means when we try and add something from group 7, a halogen, um, Cl2 in this case, or um, iodine, or bromine, or fluorine, or yeah. So those are all halogens, and we can go through a process of halogenation to make this lovely compound over here, plus this inorganic compound over here. This is due to radical substitution. I'm going to come to that in a second. So there are a series of steps that happens because we can't just bang in C6H14 and Cl2 and you'll just magically make that. There are three steps in which it goes through to make the products that we want. The first step is initiation. Second step is propagation. And the third step is termination. Sounds very geeky, but those are the words that you need to remember. 
Look, they're even in alphabetical order as well. So, what happens is that under the presence of UV light, which you would need to remember, especially in module 4, when we talk about green chemistry, which is very fantastic, um, we split chlorine into radicals. And not those hipsters, but particles with a single unpaired electron. So, let's have a look at this, because you might be thinking, huh? Huh? So, we've got chlorine over here with its shared electrons in a, co uh, in a covalent bond. When we split it up, it goes through homolytic fission, which means that the electrons, when split up, each go to different atoms. So, we've got one electron going to this atom over here and one electron going to this atom here. If it was heterolytic fission, the at the electrons okay i said atoms didn't like the electrons would be at only one atom but homolytic fission the electrons go to both atoms they're equally shared between both atoms should i say but usually seen as a covalent bond it would just be one electron going to each atom and that would form three radicals because we've got this single unpaired electron because all these electrons would be paired up but this one is not paired up neither is that so we form that and we symbolize it by having a dot either um, after the chlorine or before the chlorine. It doesn't really matter that much with chlorine. So the second step is propagation. We have this lovely chlorine with its unpaired electron and we've got hexane which is C6H14. So we are reacting the chlorine radical with um, hexane and what happens is that that paired that unpaired electron gets excited to see this and it goes through a radical substitution therefore this radical is being substituted with one of the hydrogen atoms form a covalent well it doesn't really form a covalent bond which makes C6H13 with a and with a radical on the carbon because if you think about it all the hydrogens are connected to the carbon if one hydrogen has left and an electron has taken the place of it it is on the carbon plus the hydrogen which we have just um, kicked out of the hexane and the chlorine radical remember the chlorine radical has that single electron it can give it to the hydrogen um, to form ionic bonds yeah, and that's it. That's the first step of the propagation step. The second step is we have this we have this radical, C six H H thirteen radical, and we've got lots and lots of this. By the way, it is in excess. Okay, you can't just have one molecule of Cl two. That's ridiculous. So we have lots and lots of it. So it will react with a chlorine um, molecule. Uh, which would make this split up through homolytic fission to make C6H13Cl plus the chlorine radical. Okay, and as you can see, if, because we have lots of this in excess as well, everything everything is in excess basically. We can have this chlorine radical reacting with that to make C6H13, and it goes on and on and on in a cycle. What actually terminates the whole process is when the radicals form together, because look, if you notice, we've got, we've, got, we've got a radical and a neutral compound. When we have two radicals together, so say for example, dot Cl plus dot Cl to make Cl2, that's terminated. That's one of the termination steps. The second one is if we have dot C6H13 plus dot C6H13 to make um, C12H26, which is an alkane because of its CNH2N plus 2, or we can react dot C6H13 plus dot CL to make C6H13Cl, and that is definitely it for reactions of alkanes.